What is good everyone? I'm Forrest Walker and hello from Mintz Belarus. So I have one more photo walk talk planned for Mintz before I covered Independence Avenue, but this time we're gonna do something a little different and I'm gonna focus on Christmas markets. One, because Mintz has quite a few Christmas markets, has a good Christmas atmosphere and there's no restrictions right now during the pandemic. So I thought it would be a good idea. And also because we can do something a little different. Most of the time I'm shooting during the day. I much prefer daylight and day photography, but I do like some night photography too. So for this one, we can focus on a little bit of insights behind night photography. Now, I don't shoot flash, but I do like artificial light. And with the Christmas markets and all the Christmas lights, there's enough artificial light out there. So I can shoot without flash. So I can share a lot of different insights when we go through the photos. And if you're not familiar with any of my photo walk talks in the past, let me give you a quick overview so you have an idea. Basically, it's my twist on a photo walk that you might have seen from other photographers, but instead of taking you out with me on the walk, we're more gonna take the photos from the walk and go over them together. So I can give kind of different insights, share a little bit of how I look at photos and, and learn from them, because I think learning from your own photos and even learning from other people's photos is one of the best ways to get better other than getting out there and photographing. I'll explain it a little bit more before we get into the photos, but I've selected around 20 photos from the walk. And first we're gonna get into my computer. I'm gonna go over a quick map that I prepared for you to show you where the different Christmas markets are. Now for the photo walk, I focused on one specific market, definitely the biggest market here and by far the best one at night. But there are a few other markets and I'll go over those a little bit. I even prepared a few photos just to give you an idea. But then we'll get into the main market. I actually photographed it on New Year's Eve for this talk. So that's enough intro. Let's get into my computer. First, we'll go over that map, give you some context of where I went, and then we'll get into the photos. All right, let's go. All right, so here we have a map of Mintz, Belarus zoomed out. It's a pretty big city, but we're going to be covering the Christmas markets right in the center here. Get a little closer this center right here, and I made a quick little map to show you. Now, on the walk and the photos we're going to mostly cover at night, I did the market right here, and this is the main Christmas market right by the Sport Palace. This is where, definitely the most active at night. You're going to see a lot of pictures from there. There's a small little amusement park. There's a lot going on there. The actual market selling food and stuff like that is the most, I'd say, most authentic type of Christmas market. So there's a lot going on here, especially at night. There's a few other markets that are Christmas markets too, but they're not nearly as interesting, especially at night. I'm gonna share a few pictures during the day of these markets just so you can see, get an idea. But there's one right by the Holy Spirit Cathedral here. So if you were checking out this market here, you could skip over to here and see it too. There's a stage right by the uh, Holy Spirit Cathedral that they set up. I'll show you a picture of that. And there are, is some entertainment and events that go on there. And then there's some normal stands over here, but there's not a lot of activity around here. And then there's October Square, which is one of the main squares in the city. During the day, I definitely recommend going here during the Christmas market. They have a big tree there. It's a nice square. There's there's children and families and people taking pictures. Sometimes there's a Santa Claus hanging out there. And then they do have these booths. They're like these, they set them up and they're like these enclosed booths and they just sell like um, products that you could find at the store. So it's not that special really compared to the market over here where they're, they're grilling meats and things like that. But if you keep going up Independence Avenue or you take the Metro, you could go all the way up to a couple stops up and then over to Kamaruski Market. That's the biggest market in the city. There's always a lot going on there, but during the Christmas time, they do set up like selling Christmas trees and wreaths and all that type of stuff. So it has much more Christmas atmosphere. I'll share a few pictures of that. And then we'll go into the night market scene up here where I actually did the walk. Before we get in the photos, let me cover what we're going to talk about. I do this every video on the photo walk just so you get an idea of what we're going to do. But normally when you look at photos, it's just, do you, do you like it or not? But for this exercise, we're going to get more into it so I can share different insights. First off, I'm going to talk about if it works, if it doesn't work, everything I'm going to do. I've selected around 20 photos. It's going to be off the cuff just so you can get a, an idea of the first things I look at. I'm going to explain if there was certain things I was going for, what grabbed me, um, when you're looking at your photos and you like a photo, you should at least be able to explain why you took it. Even if it was an instinctual shot, you should be able to see what grabbed you. I'll see if there's anything that's bothering me or I wish could have been either out of my control or in my control to some degree. Things that I could have done differently maybe. Um, how I approach the scene. Any challenges that I ran into. When you, when you look at a photo, you can only see what's inside the frame. So you don't know what type of challenges maybe force the photographer to take it a certain way. Sometimes that happens. 
And then just an overall feeling, which is at the end of the day, that's the most important. Any lessons taken or emphasized from looking at the photos. And before we get into it, I just want to emphasize that sometimes photos just work. Normally, you're not going to be technically breaking them apart like we're going to do for this. But if a photo works, it works. It doesn't always have to be perfect. A lot of times, some of the best photos, you could technically break them apart. But why do that? If it works, it works. But again, for this exercise, we're going to do that. We're going to break them apart. So let's get into it. I have Lightroom set up here. So we're going to start off with a few photos to show you the other markets. And then we're going to get more into the specifics of the night market and using artificial light and things like that. I actually did the... Um, walk on the New Year's Eve. So there was more going on because at night it is really cold. So, I mean, there's some activity, but not a, uh, not as much as there would be on a New Year's Eve. So we'll get into that. But first, let me just show you some of the markets I was talking about. This is the one by the Holy uh, Spirit Cathedral, I think it's called. Um, but this is the stage I was talking about that they set up here. The lights change here. They can put graphics on it. It's kind of interesting. This is October Square. This is the Christmas tree. You can't really see, but there's there's the set up booths here with like store products in there. On this day, there wasn't a whole lot going on, but they were still setting it up. But that's October Square. Here's a little more bu a busy of a day. Here's the tree. Uh, people setting up, taking pictures. That's really what you're going to see there. There are people taking pictures during the day more than anything. And yeah, the reason I took this photo... I'm not going to go too much into these photos because it's not really what this talks about, but I liked her hat, the nice orange hat, and I try to catch it right when it's just above here and it, it separates her face into here. So it really shows that hat. Here's those booths that I was talking about. So in here, there's just store products. This is at Kamaruski Market, and here they're selling trees, and the, in this big building is the actual normal market. Just outside the market, it's interesting too. I'm going to share a few photos just around the city. There'll be set up street markets for Christmas. She's selling these here. And then if you go underneath some of the uh, tunnels underneath, they're selling Christmas products. So all that stuff's interesting to check out. She's selling the Christmas trees here. Uh, uh, locals will call a lot of things Christmas markets. Like this is in a, in a mall. Um, and so there are Christmas markets in malls, at least that's what the locals call them, but I, I definitely wouldn't call them a Christmas market, but it's just a mall and they're set up for Christmas basically. So now we're going to get to the place by the sports complex, which is the main area for the Christmas market. And that's where I did the walk during the night. Here's to show you a little bit during the day, because there is some activity for, uh, those of you, you'll notice. Uh, that there's no mass, which is one kind of unique thing going on in Belarus right now. It's There's no mask ordinance, so most people don't wear masks. But they set up a little amusement park, which is I really like. It's interesting. So here we're getting a little later in the day. Um, they're selling the, the grilled meats here. Okay, now we're getting to the point where it's starting to get dark. So once it starts to get dark, actually a really good time to try to take some photos is, is when it's about to be dark, but there's still enough light to use. Um, so you still catch some of the background because once it turns to night, you're only going to be able to use the artificial lights. But here what I was doing was using these artificial lights while still getting some of the background. So it also gives you two different colors. You have kind of the blue of the uh, twilight here and then the artificial lights here. They highlight her right there. Okay, now we're getting into night, and this is where the artificial lights can be interesting. If you expose for the lights, maybe you can a little bit of overexposure, so you get a little bit of the background too. But um, it, it creates an interesting effect with these artificial lights here. There's different things you can play with. These guys are all around selling these lead balloons here, LEDs. So again, exposing for that. But now I'm not using flash. I like some flash, but really I only like flash during the day using the ambient light. I don't like flash at night at all because all it does is expose for the close subjects and doesn't give you any other information or you know atmosphere or scene. So personally, I don't like it. But I mean, if you do, that's fine. But we're not going to talk about it in this this uh, walk here, we're going to be focusing on photographing it at night 
using artificial light. And so with that, you're going to have to have a high ISO, which I don't love. So you can kind of see there, I have to have a slower shutter speed and high ISO. I think I'm at 6,400 here and a shutter speed probably around 125, I'd say. And then I want a little bit, I don't want to be like, a, I don't want to be shooting wide open. So I think it's around five, 5.6, four to maybe four, four to 5.6 on all these photos. So again, here we're playing with the lights here. We have the yellow light of the popcorn machine and the blue lights of the Christmas tree. I'm using a little bit of trying to frame her in there. You have kind of a frame here, kind of frame here, and then you have the people to the side. So I'm, I'm, I'm composing it. So you have different things going on and they're separated by lines. And then you have the different lights here very Christmassy. Here are those uh, LED balloons and they're just in a little stand here. And so I was trying to play with those because you have the little lights here waiting for something to happen and nothing really happened. But then at one point a little boy did walk by. So that's what I was doing there. But it's more just kind of a playing around with the lights type of shot. There's not enough there. So here's the different stands, and when you have these stands, they're actually pretty bright light inside there. So if you're exposing, for one thing, if you want them to be somewhat exposed, it's going to be a little overexposed in the background. So that's one difficulty that you're going to have to work with at night and when you're not shooting flash. That's a big reason people do shoot with flash is because it's, it's guaranteed you know the exposure and you don't have to fight different things. But at the same time, you don't always have the background showing like this. But in this case, I don't really like this photo at all, but uh, I'm just kind of showing the different exposures and what you have to work with here. Okay, so here's a, a scene where people are just waiting around. Behind me, there's um, some amusement rides. Some of the people are watching those. But uh, here you have, there's some smoke. So I'm catching that in the atmosphere. The light hits the smoke and just the different people hanging out. You have this guy right here <laughs> looking kind of funny. I don't know what's going on there. But here I'm just, uh, I took this photo pretty quick, but at the same time I was, I was reading it as I walked closer. So I wanted to make sure to get them separated with her in the middle. So there wasn't a whole lot of overlapping, which there really isn't. So all the main people are separated. That's what I was going for with a little bit of that for atmosphere and then getting the tree in there and this in there too. So overall, I think I, this photo is better than the ones we've seen so far. Here's uh, around the tree here. People were dancing. There's some music going. Um, so I just kind of, I was watching this and I took this photo right when I saw him basically making this gesture in the face. So I like him quite a bit. That's a lot of expression right there. The hand there, you got him there. Um, and they're separated. This is a nice couple right here. Um, they have a, a nice little connection there. She's kind of looking at me, I think, so I don't love that part. Uh, but my least favorite part of this photo would be, I don't want this guy here, really. This this side right here is not really adding anything. This side right here here is pretty good, I think. I like this right here. So if I could, I would have, sorry. If I could, I would have moved a little bit and caught it from him and then focused a little more here. So this would be in the center. But this was partially an instinctual shot. As soon as I saw him moving like that, I took the shot. Here's more of an action shot. They're getting really into the dancing, jumping around. I liked her right there, and then he's laughing. So I caught him as he's jumping, and you get a little blur here. So right here, I kind of like this part. The rest of it's a little bit of a mess, though. There's a lot going on. And you're having to deal with slow shutter speed and everything. So trying to get them in focus is a little difficult while they're moving around, but I like that he's more blurry and they're mostly in focus, but it's still a bit of a mess. Here's just a random scene to the side. I caught them a lot of times when you're taking photos or when I'm taking photos, I'm trying to catch people in mid movement because it creates more of an interesting dynamic and gesture and it's a little different than someone just standing. Um, you can catch people in pretty awkward positions uh, that that does make the scene more dynamic. So he's about to lift her. This guy's jumping around dancing. So you, you have some nice movements here. Uh, there's too much space here. I don't like that. It's a little messy back here too. 
Here's that same couple from earlier. And they were an interesting couple. I like her red hair in the light. Looks nice. Nice looking couple. And then also, the thing is, this is too small. Most people wouldn't even notice. But this is obviously, if you look, this is her. So I like that he had a photo of her in his phone like that. I like her cotton candy here. So I was trying to get them together like that and catch the light in her hair like this. So I got that, but still, there's, it's mostly back over here. And this is, I, I, these people behind the cotton candy aren't really helping too much. So it needs something more, and uh, the background's a little bit messy, but I like the couple here. Here's another couple. They were dancing. Mainly, I, I just like his face. I mean, they're dancing. I don't know if they're having a good time. I took a photo of her, too, and she has a similar face. So I don't know. So it was kind of a funny scene. They both have their, their Santa hats on. His head's resting right here. They're wearing black. So all you really see is his head coming out like that with the Santa hats. So it, it creates a little bit of interest there. A little. It makes it more interesting when they're both wearing black and his head's just popping up like that. He's looking to the side, which I like. Background's messy, but it's not too bad with the people. They're all wearing pretty dark colors, which is nice. Um, so the worst part would probably be the sign right here. This, I don't mind the lights back there, but this part is a little dis distracting. But, but I got what I wanted mostly, but it needs something more with less distractions in the back. Here, not a particularly good shot, but I did catch it. They, they were about to get in a fight, so... <laughs> You know, when I've seen quite a few different fights happen over the years doing photography. And whenever you take photos, they, they, they feel like they're going to be better than they usually are because in the photo you can't tell so much that they're, they're arguing. But in this one, you can. I mean, his gesture right here with the hands, his face, um, he, he obviously is not happy. This guy was messing with him for whatever reason. I don't know if he, he was drunk. Um, but they're getting an argument here. It almost looked like it was going to turn into a fight. So I did catch his gesture all right, but it's a little far away, and the background is just just a, a mess. And this guy's taking a selfie, right? That's extremely direct, uh, distracting right there. Here's another scene, catching people in different positions, kind of um, gesture. He's at an angle here. He's at an angle. He's making an interesting face here. And then you have the child here staring at him. He was dancing, actually. Again, I do believe alcohol was involved, but they're dancing and having fun, but the background's messy, and it's just kind of a mess of a scene, but there's some interest in there. Here's uh, like bumper cars over here. Here, playing with the different colors and lights. Uh, I like her jacket here, her face right here. Um, I like the couple. They have their fur hoods. You have this old light, uh, ticket booth here with the lights. But the things I don't like, I don't like this side right here, her back, black, back here, and that's not adding anything. So this part is okay, but the rest of it is not really helping. Here's uh, the ride here, the swan ride. So I took a few photos of over here. I like his gesture. He's the man in charge. He's walking by, and then you have this mom and child here. The child's looking at me, I think, but she's not. So I, I like them, um, and you have the the ride here and the lights, but uh, yeah, then you have the, another person over here framed in there, but it needs to be a little more focused on the people. There's a little too much space up here, and yeah, it's okay, but nothing great. Here you can play, since you're already dealing with slow shutter speed, if you want people to be in focus and not blurred, you're going to have to be very still, but if people are moving, you can't control that. But sometimes you can use that. Now, overall, I don't like this photo, but I'm just showing how you can use it. There's a there's a child here on this ride. So as, as long as you stay still and focus for the background, get that tree in there, as and you time it. So you click the shutter as the child swings by. It's going to create a little blur. But it needs to be a little more light here. And yeah, I mean, it's not enough. It's just a small part of the scene, and it's not as focused as I'd like. And by focus, I don't mean the blur. I just mean it, it, it doesn't attract your eyes to this as much as I'd like. It needs more light. There's not enough going on in the frame anyway. Okay, just off to the side. Uh, this is actually by the sports complex. There's a skating rink, which honestly is maybe the most interesting part. I've taken quite a few photos in there. 
Um, it goes on during the day too, of course, but here they have the Christmas lights so you can focus for the lights, but this is the skating rink. And so we're going to finish off in there, but um, I've taken quite a few photos in there of the people skating. They always feel like they're going to be better than they are, but the, the main the main problem is you can't get that close to people skating. So everybody is is too far away unless they come up right to the the wall here. But the, actually the best photos I'd say were just the people off to the side putting their skating shoes on, the couples and things like that. But here you have a Christmas tree in here. So he's getting the ice ready, which they do like every half an hour. And so I caught him as he goes by more exposing for the lights here. One thing about shooting inside here is the actual skating rink with the lights is very bright, but the rest of it is, is dark. So that's, that's an issue playing with the exposure there when you have, if you have people over here, they're going to be dark unless you overexpose the background. So trying to get the right balance here where you still see the tree, but this is not too blown out. That's what you have to deal with. But I, I like that the lights stand out here and the blue shows the Christmas tree. Caught him right in between the strands of light here, so it frames him in there. So I got what I wanted here. Um, it would be nice if something maybe was going on here. But that's the skating rink. I think that's about it for now. I don't want to take forever here. Yeah, oh, we'll finish off with this one. So this was at the end of the night walking back home. Um, this is in between the sports complex where I was taking the photos and that cathedral. And here's just a man. I, I'm guessing they do rides, but I every time I walked by, <laughs> he wasn't getting any customers. So I don't know if this is the best spot for that. But he has a horse here. What I like about this is you get contrast here. The white horse with at night with the grass, it's almost, I mean, it's, it's dark. So he the horse really stands out if you expose for the horse. Everything else is dark, so you have this nice horse. Really stands out with the red. He's just looking off in the distance, so I liked him there. So I liked them, so I, I had to lift the camera pretty high so that the head wasn't overlapping with these distracting lights. So you really focus on the horse here. And then getting some of those lights in the, in the cathedral yeah, in the background. It's more of just an atmosphere photo, I'd say. And there's not anything actually going on. But... It does give you a scene. So we're going to finish off with that. I'm going to, we're going to come back out of the computer and I'll share some different key points about shooting at night and uh, shooting the Christmas market and some of the photos we saw. So let's so get into it. All right. So I hope you enjoyed looking through those photos and got to see what the Christmas markets are like here in Minsk and what the Christmas atmosphere is like and maybe learn something from it too. A few key points I think we can take from it is one, a big one is when you're shooting at night and you're using the artificial light, you really need to see where that light's hitting and focus on that. Work it to your advantage. You really need to see how your camera and your setting see because our eyes are so good at exposing for everything. So you might see a great shot, take it, and then everything's dark. So look where that light hits, expose for it correctly so it's not blown out too, and then make sure there's enough in there in that scene that's being hit by the light so it's not just one thing and you can see some other things too, unless that one thing is very strong. So that's a big thing. And then really be aware of your camera settings and how to work with them well at night because during the day you can have the faster shutter speed, the lower ISO and all, the, all that different stuff. But at night you're a little more restricted. So I have to be a lot more careful that I'm not moving fast. And then also you, you don't want too many people moving quickly either because then everything's going to be blurry. So you really have to be prepared for the shot. You can't take quick shots like you can during the day or everything's just going to be a blur. So look for the artificial light. Be aware of the light. Be aware of your settings. Uh, you can play around a lot with artificial light, which is fun, but at the same time, you're a little more restricted with what you can take a, a good photo of when you don't have the light everywhere like you would have during the day. But it's still fun to try, especially when you have Christmas markets. So that brings us to an end of the photo walk talk. I have one more video planned for Minsk because I'm moving off to Erevan, Armenia, but it will be kind of an overview of Minsk, final impressions, and share more photos. And then I actually do have one more video that I've already made that will be from Minsk. Something happened here that I didn't really want to talk about yet, but I did get arrested while I was here when I was photographing a protest. So I'll release that, but I'm going to wait till I'm out of Minsk and we've kind of finished things off. But I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy seeing that one. I'm okay, but it was an interesting experience and I'll share that because when I was working on the project, that was one of the main things people want to hear was things like that that happened to me. So we'll talk about that, but that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Cheers.